Elon Musk's SpaceX is developing a vehicle that could be a game changer for space travel. Despite the bad weather and many other challenges that threaten SpaceX South Texas' launch and build site, there has been a lot of well-observed activities around Starbase, working on developing and testing the Starship system. The Starship prototype, known as SN20, which stands for Ship Number 20, is the latest in a series of prototype launches for the Starship series. For example, a three-engine vehicle known as SN15 flew to a maximum altitude of 6.2 miles in May and came down for a safe landing back on Earth. The same with the BN4 prototype, which stands for Booster Number 4. These two vehicles combined together form the Starship system. The booster is Stage 1. Its mission is to propel the Starship spacecraft to orbit. The Starship is Stage 2 and its mission will fluctuate according to plan. Now we are on the verge of testing this system for the first time, integrating the Starship spacecraft and its booster Super Heavy for the second time, but this time will be for an orbital flight around the Earth. To make this flight happen, the approval of the Federal Aviation Administration is required. This week, though, the FAA posted a draft regarding the environmental impact of Starbase operations. The general public can now comment on this draft, and Elon is encouraging people to do so. But weirdly, there are some numbers in this document that are unusual from what we know from Elon's unveiled plan. For example, this document says that Starship will have 37 Raptor engines, providing 74 meganewtons of thrust which is different from Elon's plan to have 33 Raptors providing 75 meganewtons. Besides decreasing the number of orbital launches from 20 to 5 per year, including lunar activities, plus landing Starship spacecraft on a drone ship. Join us today as we will take a sneak peek at the Starship system and the latest FAA draft document. SpaceX was founded by Elon investing half of his fortune for this reason, to make life multi-planetary. He got his motivation from the existential threats on Earth, such as an asteroid strike big enough to wipe out humanity. Reaching these goals requires a vehicle that's up to the mission. A Starship system is a rocket and spacecraft combination that will be a fully reusable transportation system capable of carrying up to 100 people to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. The system is designed to be fully reusable, meaning the principal hardware elements are not dumped into the sea or allowed to burn up, as in old launch systems, but they will be recovered from space. The company proved this method before with its Falcon rocket, breaking many new records in a very short time. The latest one just finished transporting the first four civilians to orbit Earth for three days. But with Starship, the hopes are much bigger. Starship will play a part in NASA's Artemis program, which aims to establish a long-term human presence on the Moon. Musk defined the Starship system to be a three-stage system. Stage zero. The orbital launch tower is not ready yet, but in the meantime, we use the 1,000-ton crane instead. The tower's main purpose will be to support a crane capable of stacking starships on super-heavy boosters in the next orbital flight, as well as some kind of stabilization mechanism to make that delicate process slightly more viable on the windy South Texas coast. Stage 1 the booster stage, super heavy, measures 228 feet long and is 30 feet in diameter. It uses stainless steel ring construction on its body frame. The bottommost section, informally called the skirt, could house up to 33 sea-level Raptor engines that produce a cumulative 74,000 kilonewtons of thrust at liftoff, which is totally confusing from what is shown in the FAA draft document. We will come to that in a moment. Stage 2. The Starship spacecraft that will be on top of the Super Heavy booster uses the same stainless steel ring construction as the booster, measuring 160 feet tall. There are six Raptor engines that power the spacecraft, three designed for sea level operation, and three Raptor vacuum engines optimized for use in the vacuum of space, producing a cumulative thrust of about 14 meganewtons. Taken together, the massive combined launch system reaches nearly 400 feet tall and combined with the orbital launch stand on which it rests. The whole thing is about 475 feet high, which is taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza. SpaceX's new Texas launch site will undergo an environmental review to prepare for the first flights of the company's new Starship spacecraft. This long-awaited procedural step is the first of several regulatory hurdles that SpaceX must clear before obtaining final permission to launch its super-heavy booster and Starship upper stage from Starbase. 
This document, formerly called a Draft Programmatic Environmental Assessment, its main purpose is to evaluate the potential environmental impacts of SpaceX's Starship program, including launch and re-entry. It also reviews debris recovery, the integration tower, and other launch-related construction, and local road closures between Brownsville and Boca Chica Beach. The FAA document finds no significant impacts. Even the impact of noise on surrounding communities, including South Padre Island, located several miles away, was believed to be one of the biggest concerns, as described in 60 Minutes Plus reports, but an independent assessment found noise levels to be manageable. There was only one exception that affected the number of flights per year to be five launches instead of 20 during the operational phase of the program. The reason, as described, is the excessive road closures of Highway 4. Moreover, in the launch vehicle section, weirdly, the FAA described Starship with some notable changes. The document says that Super Heavy will have 37 Raptor engines, providing a total of 74 mega newtons of thrust. This is totally different from Elon's plans to have 33 Raptors providing over 75 mega newtons. After the public comment period closes, the FAA will finalize its environmental assessment. Following this, the FAA will issue one of three rulings, a finding of no significant impact, a mitigated FONSI, or a notice of intent to prepare an environmental impact statement. A FONSI would allow the formal launch licensing process to proceed. If a full environmental impact statement is needed, launches from South Texas would likely be delayed by months, if not years, as more paperwork is completed. SpaceX has not revealed the full extent of its launch plans for Super Heavy and Starship, but the document suggests the company may eventually land its Super Heavy booster downrange on a platform in the Gulf of Mexico, and Starship may land in remote islands in the Pacific Ocean. SpaceX also will likely conduct launches from a platform in the Gulf of Mexico, as well as a pad at Kennedy Space Center. The upside of Friday's document release is that SpaceX can now move forward with some confidence that it ultimately will at least be able to conduct orbital test flights of Super Heavy and Starship from South Texas. This is critical as the site is just a couple of kilometers from the factory where the company assembles the giant rocket and spacecraft. What do you think? What are your expectations for SpaceX's Starship first orbital test? Let's discuss it down below. Thanks for watching.